what a person should actually do with Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 to 10 is do it all in one sitting because it all belongs together. But unfortunately on the Udemy platform that we have this course, they only allow for 19 minutes in one session. So we have to break it up because all of these, uh, most of this is in one thought, especially uh, when we look from verse 6 to 10. It's actually one thought. What he's saying is, and we've seen that in the previous passage, let him that's, uh, be careful at what teaching you listen to. Embrace the people that come to teach to you. But remember, if you sit under the law preacher, your life is going to de be destroyed. That's what he is saying. And uh, we, I'm just quickly going back, and I want to just touch on verse 6. It says, Let him that is taught in word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. So he says, I want you to communicate, be in fellowship with that person that come and teaches you in all good things. Uh, that all good things mean be a partner of what is good and also share, in his, share with him, be good to him, give him a place to stay, give him some food um, and be a part of that message. The focus is not money. The focus is to give yourself to that message. Now, with that in mind, he goes, he goes on to verse 9, and I want to read verse 9 and 10 to you. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In verse 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So what he is saying here is, if you go and you correct a brother that is in error, chapter 6, verse 1, what are you doing? You are doing good unto him. How are you doing good unto him? You are bearing his burden because you bring a burden to him or a doctrine to him that is easier to carry since every person will have in his life what he believes. in. That is what you are doing. And now he says, those who come and teach us, let us do good to them in grabbing that message that they have, also keeping in mind that this can be utterly destructive should we not believe the true gospel. Then he goes on and says, continue to believe in the good news, support the good news. If I come to you and I say to you, listen, listen to the teacher that comes your way, but remember, if somebody preaches to you that you should be circumcised and go back to the law of Moses, uh, you can lose your very life. Uh, by that I'm also saying to you, listen, be friendly to the guy, but count whatsoever he teaches as dung. Count it as, um, call him accursed. Know that that is bringing a curse to your life. It's not bringing the truth to your life. And then you are good to him. And how are you good to him? You preach the true message to him. You share the true message to him. And practically, this is not what Paul is now saying in this letter, but if a person doesn't want to hear, you know, then let him go. Then he's not welcome. Uh, talking about people that want to teach with, teach you, especially. Uh, so he's talking about protecting the church, but he also doesn't want his church to fight one another all the time. He was talking about fighting and envying and all those kind of things in verse chapter 5, verse 26. He says, don't envy one another, don't fight amongst one another. So what I see here is that Paul wants to teach these people how to deal with uh, people that teaches you in a way where you're not always fighting with people. That's another thing he's saying. I'm just reading verse 9 and 10 again. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. What is the well-doing that he's talking about here? Uh, the well-doing that Paul is talking about here is to do well in continually um, looking at yourself as am I in the faith and then to continue in the faith. That is the well-doing. And from that well-doing to spread the good message to others carrying their burdens. And he says here, if you continue to give yourself to the Spirit, if you never 
uh, go back to the law, if, if you never reject Christ but continue to believe in Jesus, you will, in due season, you will reap. Reap what? Reap what he mentioned in the context of verse 8. Let's read verse 8. He says, For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing. What would the well-doing be? The well-doing would be to give our lives and make ourselves available for the teaching of grace, for the teaching of the Spirit, not circumcision and the customs of Moses. He says, For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. What does that mean? It means if we don't reject the gospel and go back to the law and continue with this gospel until either the day we die or until Jesus returns, we shall reap. Reap what? Reap life everlasting. That is the context. I'm going to read 8 and 9 to you in one sitting. It says, For he that sows to his flesh shall reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In other words, if we don't turn again to the law message. That is what he is saying here. And then verse 10, As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them which are of the household of faith. So he says here, listen, as we have opportunity to do good to people, let us teach one another's gospel, encourage one another in this gospel, especially towards the household of faith. Because out there, as we have opportunity to preach to uh, uh, people that don't believe in the Lord, do that. It's wonderful. Do that. Hallelujah. We want to see people come into the true gospel. But I believe in this case, in Galatia here, what he was trying to get is the people to influence one another with continually being good to one another in bringing one another the good news of Jesus, reminding one another of the good news of Jesus Christ. The reaping it is talking about here has got nothing to do with giving somebody $10 or 100 rand, and now... Uh, you just know that you've given to a minister money and now you're going to have more money. He doesn't talk about that. It's got nothing to do with that. I think that is the lowest way of interpreting that passage that you can find, which is not even a way at all. It's almost like Paul said that uh, there's others come with another gospel, which is no gospel. There is another interpretation of this passage, which is no interpretation at all. We cannot bring money into this passage saying, should we give money, then we're going to have more money. That is not what Paul was saying. He was saying to the people, uh, bear one another's burdens by bringing the true message. And when somebody teaches you the true message, listen to it and embrace it. Why? For from that message you will have eternal life if you continue with this message. So let us continue to do good to bring this message to all people, especially unto one another, being good to the household of faith. Let us not be good to the household. And there's a, there's, there's a way where we can look at this at it like this. Um, we, can be, we, we can be good to the law message in saying that the law message brought us to a place where we realized that it was given to prophesy about Christ, uh, the law is holy, and all those kind of things. But we use it lawfully. So we're not very good unto that message, if you, if you understand. Although we are good unto it, but we're especially good unto this household of faith. We're especially good unto the church as well as the doctrine of the church in continually sharing that with one another. And I like what he says here. He says that we will definitely reap if we faint not. The context is not um, you will get a financial harvest if you don't ever stop to give to the preacher. 
It's got nothing to do with that. What he says is, if you give yourself to the message of grace preached to you, and your life is towards that, and you embrace that from that message, you will reap life everlasting, John 3, 16. And life everlasting can be measured in cars, houses, uh, fancy holidays, jets, fancy clothes, money, or all those kind of things. For the scripture says, look how many poor are rich in faith. It is amazing to see how these things really work. So in conclusion, um, I would say this passage simply says, and this is what Paul is telling them, continue to be in the good news, don't get back out of it, love on one another, even if people are from the law, we can only be who we are, we express love, and, but we, ex we especially feel and we want to protect what we are believing in, because that is where eternal life, eternal life flows out of. Glory to God. That is Galatians 6, verse 9 and 10.